In this video, I will explain how I implemented the depth of field effect. The depth of field is the range of distance relative to a camera where objects are in sharp focus. Objects outside of this range are blurred. This artifact occurs because real lenses do not focus all light rays perfectly, even under ideal conditions. The depth of field is related to the circle of confusion. The circle of confusion is the smallest spot that a lens can image. In my implementation, the depth of field is rendered using two passes. Each pass uses its own render target. In the pixel shader, we pass through a color map, which is our current rendering output, and a position map, which we will use to determine the depth of each pixel. We also pass through the textile size, which is the reciprocal of the screen's X resolution and Y resolution stored in a two-dimensional vector. We will blur the appropriate pixels using a box blur. A box blur samples a pixel and its eight surrounding pixels, giving each a weighting. We check the distance between each pixel and the camera. If a pixel is outside of the depth of field, we set the blur value to 1. We set it to 0 otherwise. We then calculate the texture coordinates of the surrounding pixels and combine them with current pixel color using the weight supplied by the box samples array. We use the conditional operator to ensure that we do not blend with pixels that are too far away from each other. In the next render target, we use a Poisson blur to blur the pixels in proportion to how far they are away from the depth of field. A Poisson blur takes a sampling of points within a disk that are uniformly distributed, enforcing a minimum distance between any two points. In my program, I use 12 samples. Like the box blur pass, we use the position map to determine the distance between the current pixel and the camera position. We then calculate the first circle of confusion value based on this distance. We multiply the circle of confusion value with the Poisson sample to offset the screen's texture coordinate. After that, we calculate a second circle of confusion value based on this coordinate. Finally, we add the blurred samples to the final rendering result.